Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Now before we get to the actual video, I just wanted to take a moment and uh, mention that if you want to support me and support the channel, uh, you can actually buy uh, some of my NFTs. Uh, I'm minting uh, my pieces on the Tezos blockchain, uh, which is pretty cheap and environmental friendly. So uh, they are not expensive at all. In fact, uh, the formation piece is uh, two Tezos and the Vellumite crystal is three Tezos. E each Tezos, I think right now is about $4. I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, if, if you want to support me, uh, it will help me a lot because creating videos is not my day job and I kind of have to uh, find the time between my projects or when I'm waiting for uh, my scenes to render, which is, for example, right now, as I'm sitting here waiting for my cash. Uh, so I just decided to record this video and yeah, if you want to support me, it will help me a lot. It would mean a lot to me. There are uh, editions. So for example, this p uh, piece has 15 editions. I think uh, nine editions are now available. And uh, let me see here. Yeah, nine editions are on the marketplace. Uh, the crystal only has one edition on the marketplace, but I'm still keeping like five. So I can definitely add more. I'm also collecting stuff. Uh, in fact, I recently uh, collected this piece by Tim J Design. Tim is a great friend and a great artist. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to uh, go buy his NFT as well. Uh, and also, uh, if if you have anything cool, I, I'd love to see it. And uh, I'm interested in uh, buying NFTs as well. So let me know. Okay. Let's get to the video. Now, uh, one of the pieces that has been requested a lot uh, recently is the infected system. Let me just mute this. And so we're gonna create this today. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty, uh, I'm hoping a pretty fast tutorial. So uh, let's just see how it goes. I don't think we're gonna do any shading because it's not really complicated at all. I'm gonna uh, share some uh, stuff with you just so you know how uh, how we can do it and also uh depending on when i post this uh we also might have uh another episode of the how to series uh, which is going to be a uh, scientific visualization i had uh kate zagoraris on the channel and we talked about uh science scientific visualization and uh a lot of interesting stuff so yeah please check that out okay Let's get to the video. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, a geometry uh, here for our tutorial, and uh, you can actually uh, go to 3dscans.com. Uh, these are all free uh, objects. In fact, if you remember from one of our previous videos, we used this one. Uh, for this video, I'm gonna be using uh, this, uh, I don't know what it is, this Jaguar or, uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna use this one, whatever it is. Uh, let me have my scene as well, because uh, I wanna see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's place down a geometry node. Let's place down a file. And I'm just gonna load it. Now, most of the time when you load a uh, objects from uh, 3D scans, or in fact, uh, anywhere else, they're gonna be kind of weird, distorted, maybe the orientation is cor uh, is not correct. This is usually because of the uh, the method that they used for the uh, 3D scan. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put down two nodes, match axis and match size. And these two are actually very helpful. Uh, I'm gonna go, go to the match axis and I'm gonna say, let me actually save this one real quick. Tutorials. Didn't I already save, save this one? I guess not. Eh, no worries. Infected system and I'm gonna call it infected tutorial. Match axis. We have from vector 0, 1, 0, and we're gonna say minus 1. 
So immediately we see the orientation is correct. Now let's go to the match size. We're going to say justify Y, the minimum. So it's going to sit on the ground. In fact, you can also offset it if you want. Go up and down. But the scale is uh, too big right now. And uh, the thing is, you can scale it to whatever value you like. In fact, there's like a target size in here. You can say scale to fit. It's going to go uh, be very small. Uh, in fact, it will be uh, the biggest, uh, essentially the, uh, the biggest axis is going to be one, the way it's set up here. You can actually set it to be like you want your X direction to be one, which is what uh, you can see right now. You can see, go with Y and go with uh, Z direction. I'm just going to leave it at, as best fit. But I'm not going to use 111. I'm going to use uh, 3.5, uh, 3 I think. Yeah, in my experiments, uh, bigger values with the way this setup works uh, are kind of better. Uh, you're free to just experience with whatever number you like. Now, uh, we have a lot of details in here. And we're going to use this geometry for the render, but uh, I just prefer using a, a little bit of a less denser uh, uh, geometry for our simulation. So, BDB from Polygon, plus the old friend, and I'm going to set it to 0 0.008. These values, I just experimented with them, so uh, I know they work, but you're free to go with uh, higher resolution if oh, in, in fact uh, lower resolution uh, if uh, it's uh, slow you can go to like 0 0.1 0 0.15 I mean I guess this is too small but 0 0.05 might work 0 0.01 might also be fine but uh, I'm gonna go with 0 0.008 and I'm gonna convert VDB Set it to be polygons and we have our geometry but uh, it's still pretty dense so uh 500,000 this was about 1 million so i'm gonna also put down a remesh node now the remesh sub is uh pretty slow so i'm not the biggest fan of it but uh we're gonna use it right now i'm gonna also show you an alternative so let's use adaptive and i'm gonna set these two values just waiting for this thing to load okay so for the relative density i'm gonna put down let me also manual because it's gonna be super slow i'm gonna put down one in here and also one in uh, the second one so i'm gonna set it to on mouse up it's a better method i think because uh, then when you're changing something it won't constantly load it as you can see, this is actually much better now. Uh, we won't use this one for our render, because if you look here, there's just so much more uh, resolution, and uh, it's, it's just better. But for our purposes, and in fact for the simulation, I think this is pretty good. All right. Now, as an alternative, there's a node called Fast Remesh, and it's not available by default, uh, but it was available in... Uh, side effects uh competition they did a while ago uh, i'm not sure where it was i think it was called tech art if i'm not mistaken tech art was it let's just see heck should be able to find it art challenge yes so uh, if you want to download these you can go to the forum uh, I think it's in one of these categories but let's just go to the forum uh, itself and, and best uh, utility entries and if you scroll down here pretty much near the end I think this one the fast remesh it's an amazing node uh, i'm hoping the uh, labs tools will actually do this one uh because it's just amazing now when you go to it uh, you just bring this 
on up and as you can see it's pretty fast you set the target length and just it's it's great and there are sims and if you don't like it you can just uh, check this one and it remeshes everything and as you can see uh, it, it's a great way of uh, remeshing stuff uh, I, i'm not gonna include this one uh, in the scene file because i'm not sure if i can share it but uh, you can just uh, go there and download it we're gonna go with our normal remesh all right so we're gonna use some pyro techniques uh, Actually, we've uh, used similar techniques before in the Villamite Crystal tutorial, but I, I'm just going to uh, walk you through it uh, again. So, first things first, uh, we are going to create a pyro source. Let's place it right here. We're, gonna, uh, we're, we're not going to keep the input. Uh, let's go with uh, surface scatter. Uh, it's more uniform because if you look at it, uh, for example, you can see there are some points that are closer to each other. Uh, you can go ahead with this one as well. It's just I, I prefer surface. You can also go with uh, volume scatter for normal stuff, but uh, let's just go with surface. And for our uh, separation, I'm going to put down 0 0.025. I think it's a good value. I'm going to create the uh, hit this plus button, create the temperature. I'm going to set the value to be 0. We're going to work with temperature in a moment. Let's, uh, let's scatter some points. Now, the way, essentially, the way it works is I'm creating these particles in here. Uh, I'm setting the temperature attribute, but it's going to be equal to zero. Now, uh, usually when we work like this, uh, we're going to put down a pyro spread. And the pyro spread is a simulation. If you have a uh, a temperature value it's going to use that and uh, do something with it uh, for example burn your scene but we don't have any values in here in fact let me just put the scale to zero as well there we go now uh, if you have a temperature attribute it's going to be red in here in fact if i bring it up it should be i think since it's just one value uh, it's not showing it let me check real quick There we go. So this is like the uh, temperature, but we don't want to work like this. What we want to do is we want to uh, pick some of these and give them the temperature so they spread. We don't want it to be on the whole geometry. So the way I'm going to do that, uh, I have my points in here. I'm going to bring it down and disconnect this for the time being. I'm going to scatter a bunch of points. Now you, you can you uh, very exact place them by hand i'm just gonna do something random uh let's see i'm gonna place nine points maybe yeah that's fine so what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna put down a sphere and i'm gonna copy this sphere to these points so ctp copy to points now they're pretty huge but we're gonna make them uh smaller now I'm gonna put down an attribute randomize. I'll randomize the p scale attribute. Bring it down and fit it between 0 0.05 and uh, 0 0.1. Now alternatively, you can also use uh, adjust float, which is probably better because uh, it has a lot of options, including a random. And by default, it puts uh, p-scale. So, in fact, let's just use this one. So, 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. There we go. Now, next up, we're going to create a group. I'm going to say group. I'm going to change it to be points. I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, I guess b-box, since we're going to use bounding regions. And we're going to switch it to bounding object and we're going to connect this one so now we're selecting these points i'm going to put down a wrangle you can also uh, put down an attribute create it doesn't matter i'm going to select this group and i'm going to say at sign temperature is equal to one so now when i visualize this temperature I actually see some of them have this value value of one so let's connect it to the pyro spread now 
let's visualize the burn uh, you can just go through these and visualize the one attribute that you want when we play we start to see something but then it dies out pretty quickly so let's dial in some settings now first things first uh, i'm gonna play with this uh, cooling rate so let's say 0 0.3 when I play it now, you can see we're actually seeing something, but uh, it's not enough. It's kind of boring. Think. You can also visualize the temperature if it helps better. Yeah, maybe this one's better. Okay, so uh, let's go to diffusion. Now, the diffusion is sort of like uh, how it's going to burn. So diffusion rate, we're going to switch this one. I, I like alligator noise. There we go. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna bring this one a little bit forward uh, as you can see and by the way you can actually see the effect of this on mouse up right here so if I put it to auto update you can see whenever I move it you can see what's happening but if you put it to on mouse up uh, when you stop it you get to see it now it might not be so useful right now but if you you're doing something very heavy it becomes very helpful because you might want to go between values and you actually have something specific in mind so i'm gonna leave it somewhere here and i'm gonna bring this one well maybe to here yeah that looks good uh element size 0 0.5 uh and for element scale also i'm gonna bring it to 0 0.5 so small and I think that's pretty good. Let's look at the temperature now. Very, very interesting. Okay. But it's still a little bit fast for me. So what I like to do, it's a kind of a trick, but I put down an attribute warp. I jump inside. Now, here's the thing. We have this burn attribute. This node by default puts out a bunch of attributes. In fact, these are the uh, stuff that we are visualizing in here. Uh, we're going to work with the uh, burn attribute it's here and it's going to show how much of this thing is actually burned or infected so i'm going to bind my burn attribute but uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to actually multiply it so let's put down a multiply i'm going to put a noise on it so our position I'm gonna put a a noise and connect it here and connect it uh, not to p actually uh, bind export and connect it back to uh, burn so it sucks now because uh, it's just too small uh, you gotta dial it up so uh, I dialed it up to these values so for amplitude I used 17.8 I brought down this roughness to 0 0.082 and I also changed the frequency to 5.9 these are just values I experimented with and when we play it now you can see it's actually really interesting but here's the thing we're multiplying this by a huge number now and when we go to our uh, geometry spreadsheet, our burn, it's actually pretty big. Like, we don't want that. We want 0 and 1. So let's just clamp it. This way, it's going to be between 0 and 1. So still uh, has the same effect. It's just between 0 and 1 now. Great. So let's put down a loop expression. And in here, we're gonna uh, select these. So let's say, uh, you, you can put whatever name you want. I'm gonna say infected. I'm gonna say at sign burn is equal equal to uh, one. Let's select it. So these are our points and we're gonna just blast them out. Blast the infected and delete non-select so these are our starting points now, i'm gonna clean our setup now and make sure uncheck this unused points because and also this one the remove uh, degenerate primitives 
because we want to keep our uh, points and just check these two. So now we don't have any attributes. Uh, I mean, uh, let's let's put down a pop net. Now we need to actually come back here and change something, but let's just keep it like this. Uh, also, we had a p scale attribute. Since we're cleaning our setup, now we don't have the p scale attribute. I'm actually gonna put this caret symbol and say p scale because I I, I want to preserve the p scale in case we need it. Because right now it would be equal to zero if I don't do it. But overall, we usually actually don't include this one. Let's just keep it for now. We're gonna see some problems we're gonna come back the only reason i'm keeping it is because you might forget this clean so let's just go without the clean and then we're gonna come back to it yeah that's better so let's create our uh stuff this one okay so let's just start from uh the top i have a bunch of points what i'm gonna do is uh i actually learned this trick from a uh, doxio studio and if you want to uh, check his tutorials it's great you definitely should in fact he actually takes a similar approach it, it just uh, i think he uses a uh, pc find but it, it's pretty much uh same i think his method is uh harder so this is a pretty easy uh version of uh kind of similar thing. So let's put down pop grain and we are gonna change some stuff in here uh first of all assume uniform radius we don't need that clumping we need that and uh I, I think that's it i don't think we need anything else so let's just play it right now uh now we're creating points on top of each other and also i'm gonna set this one to all points here we go now they are clumping, but it's terrible. So how do we fix that? Uh, one thing that we need to do right here is uh, setting the uh, velocity to zero on each frame. So V at V. You don't actually need to say it's a vector. Just you can say uh, at sign V, go to zero. Let's play it. We're getting something, but it's uh, uniform because we have this p scale attribute up there now if i set the p scale to zero assign p scale equals to zero this problem will be resolved but then uh, we won't see anything but if you turn on this uh, number in here and see that we are actually placing points on top of each other so p scale is equal to zero but we're putting in them on top so that's why I put down the clean. You don't need to say a p scale equals to zero, and we don't need to actually exclude it either. You can connect it directly, and it will still give you the same results. The only thing is, uh, it's it's equal to zero, so essentially the same thing. Let me just a little bit nicer. Yep. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna Add something to the p scale. I'm gonna do it before the sign p scale. I'm gonna say p scale plus equals and a value like 0 0.001. Let's check it out. Working now. Great. But then it's growing to infinity. So we need to clamp it. So sign p scale equals to clamp at uh, sign p scale and we need two values so i, I went with z 0 and 0 0.01 so essentially it starts from 0 it uh, we add 0 0.001 each frame and when we get to 0 0.01 we're gonna stop now when we play it we're gonna grow up but then they're gonna pretty much stay in the same uh, spot great now we're pretty much done in here the only thing is uh if i actually come out here and let's see let's add a null down here from our uh for our object 
And let's just merge these two together. Now, if you go inside, uh, there's no collision. Let's make it uh, collide with our statue. Put down a merge in here. And I'm also going to bring out line. I'm going to put down another merge because I also want to include a ground. So let's put a static object. Also, let's put down ground object, ground plane. Let's merge them together. There we go. And make sure you're not connecting them like this. Uh, it will kind of fail. It, it's not how Houdini likes it. Uh, the order operations matter. You should either put it like this or come here and say uh, mutual relationship should be. There we go. Mutual. So both work fine. So if it's like this and it's set to mutual, it's fine. But I kind of prefer using it like this. We have a ground and then we want to uh, add our collision. So for ground 0 0.15, I think worked. Let's just check it out with our object as well, but uh, let's also bring our object. So we need to uh, put down some uh, nulls. Now I'm going to use this remesh for our glider. So out, call it call. Let's copy this. Dive inside and paste it in the sub path. There we go. And when we play it, we start to see something. If you go inside, it's still, as you can see, uh, they're going inside. And one way that you can actually visualize this is uh, go to collisions, uncheck display geometry, and uh, check the collision guide. And as you can see, this is the actual uh, collider that we have in here which is terrible. Now, one thing that you can do is you can just bring this up, go to the first frame and you start to see something, but it's still not uh, really good. So what's the best way to do this is actually uh, using a volume. Now we already have this uh, VDB up here. So I'm just gonna bring another null. And you don't need to bring nulls, but uh, I mean, you should, cause uh, you need to stay organized. So I'm going to call this one out, call vol. So copy this one, go inside. Now, if you scroll down here, you see a proxy volume. Uh, I'm going to paste this one, but uh, nothing really happens. You need to come up here and say volume sample. Now we actually see our object. It's so much better. Okay. Now, uh, you shouldn't keep this one on because it will slow this down quite a lot as you can see i'm actually playing it right now but it's super slow uh, you can uncheck this you can visualize your geometry and when you play it it's actually pretty fast great it looks really cool and also uh it's not really going here but when we play it we start to see some weird stuff happening in fact maybe uh we'll be visible on the inside probably if you look around you're gonna see some problems even though we have this uh, collider and let me actually uncheck the guides here there we go so yeah there are some stuff down there in fact you can also uncheck this and it right here it's not perfect so how can we fix that uh, my solution is to actually come up here when we're scattering the points. Now I'm just gonna clip my geometry. It's pretty easy, but it's actually pretty helpful. Now I place my uh, ground on 0 0.15, so I'm just gonna use the same value. I'm actually, in fact, I'm gonna copy this parameter, dive inside my pop net and place it in here as well. So they're gonna be uh, related to each other. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to connect my pyro source to my clip. So this way, my object is actually clipped. It's not the full geometry. So now I don't have to worry about uh, my points going under this particular surface that I put there. And uh, there are like some seeds that would have gone down there. Because right now it looks pretty good. But playing with our global seed, you might come across something that you don't like. 
this way, you're just cutting anything beneath that. So let's go back to our PopNet. Now we're going to play it. And it's going to be much better. In fact, we're not seeing anything down here. And we're just going to go around. Yep, nothing. Great. Let's just let it play. And I'm going to take a sip of water. There we go. So I think around here is just fine. Uh, let it do more frames. Okay. And also you can just increase these values. You can increase your cache size. Uh, probably uh, this would be better. So let's just simulate it. I'm going to stop around 72, which I think is pretty much like this uh, best frame for us. Now, also I forgot to name this one. So I'm going to call it out statue because this was coming from uh, our actual geometry. It's going to be the render geometry for our statue. Smash. So, one problem we're actually seeing uh, this uh, static object uh, here. So, I'm just going to come here and say pop and this asterisk sign. So, see that anymore. If you want to see that, you can just merge these two together. Now, Next thing that I'm going to do, in fact, let's just merge it. Well, uh, for rendering stuff, we need to actually disconnect it, especially with redshift, since we're going to render points. But if you want to see geometry right now, you can actually put down a sphere. I would recommend using a primitive because it gets pretty heavy pretty fast. And use a copy to points. And there you go. Now you have geometry. Oh, we're not going to render it like this. Let's do something cool. Let's add some color. I'm going to put down attribute adjust color. I think it's a new node. I think they introduced this one in 19 or maybe it was one of the uh, last builds of 18.5. Uh, Let's actually check that real quick. It help tool, and it was introduced in 19. Yep. So uh, we're going to come here. We're going to say uh, let's use Let's remap an attribute. Now, I'm going to use the age attribute, which we're getting from our uh, top net. But I'm not going to use this range. I'm going to use 0 to 4. Because it's just interesting. Or you can actually use 0 to 5. It, it would be pretty much like in the middle. I think 0 to 4 is better. But let's use one of these presets. Let's use Twilight. That's pretty cool. And uh, I would recommend not using the geometry, as I mentioned, make it slow. Let's just use the points directly. We're going to keep this one as uh, a visualizing help tool, but let's just wait for this thing to go forward a little bit. Perhaps frame 120 would play. There we go. That's cool. Okay. We're pretty much done in here. Let me just stop the simulation. And I guess we can wait for 170 frames just to see how it would. There we go. It was super bright, but I think it works. And we're probably just going to end somewhere anyway. So we're going to remove this merge. We're going to add a null. Call it out grains. Maybe copy this. Go out here. Another geo. Jump inside. Object merge. Paste it. Now, I made the mistake of not naming these, so let's also name them. But the thing is, this one is going to get destroyed. Uh, our cache will be gone. 
because we're changing the name and I'm going to call this one Betcha. You can also call it setup if uh, it's easier for you to follow this way because all our setup is inside here. This is just for rendering. I have to wait for this remesh as well. Okay. So pretty much have everything. Uh, one thing that you can do is also include a grid. Merge these two together and put down a null. Say out render. Yep. Uh, you can also put down an output node in here so that even if you're like where else, when you jump out here, it will automatically uh, load the output. This is in fact what happens inside a popnet or any other simulation. We have this. Oh, it doesn't really matter. But let's just simulate one more time. And see what happens. I think somewhere around here is fine. Let's set this to show all objects. I'm going to go to render. Very pretty. Like it. I set a camera. Now, one thing that you can do is set a uh, very photography studio type situation. So Go to our grid. I'm gonna put down a bend. This is like a backdrop. But when you hit M, it essentially shifts the situation. Uh, in the bend uh, SOP, you can also sh shift the uh, axis. You can also hit B to kind of switch between all the different possibilities. I'm gonna go back to default one and hit M one more time. I'm gonna bend it. Uh, 90 degrees now you can also compensate this thing because if you go 180 degrees uh, as you can see they're not equal one thing that you can do is in fact uh, adding this value so let me uh, show you you can copy this and come in here paste it and divide it by two so now are going to be always equal. Uh, we also need more resolution, so I'm just going to 50 by 50 or maybe even like 100 by 100. There we go. Pretty good. And you can also increase this depending on your setup. I think it works fine. And then um, at the end, I'm just going to transform this a little bit behind. Come like this camera everything looks good i'm gonna zoom in a little bit uh, on our grains everything works fine on our, our statue i'm gonna set it to out render i'm also gonna include a couple of groups in here so let's put down group also group this would be g background one would be Statue, down a material node, G, statue. There's a weird group. It's coming. I guess by default it's coming from there. So uh, we can also move that one. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, with delete. You can also use a clean node. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm just gonna remove the group and let me also cancel this whole thing we don't need that right now uh group blah 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 as i mentioned uh geometries are sometimes a little bit weird when they're coming from uh programs that they use for uh scanning yep no why i can't speak today it's weird <laughs> so uh, let's just play this to frame 48. Maybe 72. Fine. Come out here. 
everything looks good but the thing is we're now using the color directly what i like to do actually is i usually switch this to uh like i, I develop it like this i kind of pick up colors in the viewport but then when i get to the rendering section i actually switch this to grayscale now this way we only have a grayscale ramp and it's much easier to control this uh in the en engine because uh this way you can actually get creative. You don't need to come back to the subs level to set up your colors. Uh, let's set our materials. So we're going to go to the material tab. We're going to create our map builder. I'm going to need three materials. PG. Statue. And brains. Recording. Good. Let's assign these materials. Let's assign statue. Let's assign G. And let's go back here. Let's go to our grains. And we don't need to jump inside. We're going to go to redshift. We're going to go to render. And uh, we're going to set the grains. And we're also going to go to redshift particles. Check this render as particles. And uh, I think we need to dial this down. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Probably it's going to work fine. Yeah. Also on our statue, since I know I'm going to tessellate it, and I'm also going to use displacements later. So let's just include. Now, I'm not going to really get into the lighting right now or the rendering because it's pretty normal. The only thing is we're going to use uh, attributes and pretty normal stuff. So let's just do a really quick uh, lighting setup. One light from here. One light from the other side. And maybe one light from here. Sort of like a rim light. To camera. Let's just check out our render. I'm going to save it. I'm using Redshift 3.0.63. Uh, uh, I upgraded to 65 and I didn't like it. I think uh, weird. The Noiser didn't work well. Uh, I'm gonna use the older version, but uh, it's still pretty new, so don't worry. We use optics. We're using uh, OCIO, and the only thing is, I think we forgot to bring this one up. The, uh, yeah, just stop this real quick. Now, if you remember, uh, on our. Uh, object here we need to actually bring it to this value as well in fact i think we have it yeah no we don't let me let me go back we need to copy this there we go because uh, that's where we set our uh ground and paste relative reference there we go now it's colliding correctly now you can actually uh, set it up where it was uh initially but then you kind of have to play with everything correct and since if you uh, look at it from here it's not really straight so you can play with it rotate it i just feel like this is easier go back to camera go back to our render let's render it out and let's see what we have right off the bat it's actually pretty cool i like it uh, I'm going to go to material, go to grains. We're not going to really worry about anything else except grains. Let's put down uh, RS uh, user data color. And we're going to bring our CD. Let's just directly connect it. We need to refresh the IPR. There we go. Let's add a ramp. And let's use... I like twilight so let's just use that one now the colors look pretty good i might let it uh go further a little bit get some uh more interesting colors in here because if you remember they're reacting to the age attribute that's pretty cool uh, if you don't like it you can actually come back here and set this to work on uh four And it will probably be uh, brighter. 
There we go. And since we're getting a little bit of white, I, I'll probably go back to 72. Is this thing working? I don't think they're pushing the eye. Okay, so one thing that you can do is go to your out, go to your redshift IPR, and you can check live sub updates. Uh, I, I like to uh, switch this to advanced. Uh, I usually don't use automatic sampling, but let's just use it right now because fine. Go back to our grains. Now, when we refresh now, you can actually go back and forth your timeline. So you'll actually get to see update. There we go. All around here is fine. It's actually connected to the material. So we're going to use the diffuse color, but also I'm going to uh, add some uh, mission. So mission color, go to mission. I'm just going to bring it up to like 0 0.25. It's a tiny bit. As you can see, it's actually has a huge effect. This is 0, 0 0.5. Maybe in fact 0 0.5. Better. You can play with it until we like it. This is a pretty cool color. Here's the thing. You can actually switch it. You can go to uh, black body. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you're using black body, you should probably stick to like 0 0.25. Maybe even 0 0.2. Yeah, that, that, that's better, I think. All right. You can also connect like noise to your uh, roughness. You can make it rough. You can not do that. It's fine. Up to you. Uh, let's go to our background. Now, one thing that I like to do here is I want to put down a max on noise. And as you can see, we, we can actually see the background, but I still want to see the reflections, but I don't want to see the actual lights. Now, you can go to your uh, light settings and uh, uncheck this background, but then they're in the same uh, uh, same object, so you have to kind of separate them. Obviously, that's the uh, normal way but one thing that you can do is actually you can add a very tiny displacement to everything and i mean uh everything always has some sort of displacement so actually more physically accurate as well it's gonna go crazy now because nothing is correct wow so, i'm gonna uncheck this bring this to 0 0.00, .00 two maybe and in here i'm going to switch it to fbm and maybe 0 0.2 very tiny let's add the displacement not visible at all and we're going to connect the material as well and it looks let me check my settings i'm using these so 0 0.0015 .0 minus 0.5 and 0.5 and on the noise i'm using 0 0.1 obviously it's not gonna resolve uh, everything so you still might want to move your lights so they're in better positions uh, you might want to actually bring them out so this is this light i'm gonna just move it out a little bit not that obvious maybe it in here let's go to the other one i still have to move that one because it's perfect that's fine 0.1 also pretty good it's not perfect uh, there's still a lot of work that we can do we can put the light here and it will probably be uh, acceptable let's see Obviously, one thing that you can do in here is adding some uh, roughness to your uh, backdrop, which will help a lot. So let's add 0 0.3 maybe. That looks pretty good. Place one light in here. I'm gonna place it kind of on the left side and switch to the first one. I think it's kind of to the right. Looks decent. Now maybe put one light up here so you have 
a bit of a uh, light in the front as well. Usually helps with setup. Make sure you're not exposing anything. And I mean, we're pretty much done. Uh, also, I include a bouquet effect. I'm gonna save the scene because sometimes it crashes this way. 0 0.315. Let's place our focal point. That's something somewhere around here. 0 0.2 is fine. And switch the colors as you like play with everything go to grains switch this to you kind of want to go with my light i just love it there we go it's cool in the thumbnail i'm actually using uh the black body and also on my own setup and uh, the one you saw on youtube but I, I think right now this looks pretty cool let's just put the way to one and you can obviously play with the materials as well want maybe you can use like copper might look cool i don't know it's up to you guys uh you can just play with them as we've done before and mix them up add some uh, noises use material blenders all the nice stuff that uh, we always do let's just put something very basic in here i'm gonna put down a maxon noise and maybe it'll just be something like that. there we go really basic nothing complicated and also you can displacement and connect the displacement displacement 0 0.005 maybe and i like to keep minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 this essentially means uh, your uh, displacement won't be just towards outside it's going to be sort of a little bit outside a little bit inside it, it it's uh, it, it will help look i think we usually tend to do that but feel free to just stick to the uh, normal one 0 0.5 in the emission because it was a little bit too bright and yep that that's that's our setting i hope you guys like this one uh i always say i want to keep my tutorials short but i think this one also turned out pretty long about an hour so better than our two hour stuff uh, i hope you guys like this as i mentioned you can uh support me by buying my nfts uh I thank you guys uh i've been getting a lot of messages from you guys uh, it's been awesome and uh keep an eye out for the uh interview i'm not sure if i'll post that one first or this one uh after that I i'm not sure uh, what i'm gonna do i, I guess <laughs> we'll see and yeah thanks for joining me and have a nice day bye guys